and I'm not going to prove it, but I think it's one of those proofs where it's like, okay, now I see what I've got to do. And I put that in quotes because this ain't going to be a proof. So let X and Y be non zero zero divisors. My claim is really what I need to prove. If I, if, and that's right, if I can get from X to Y in three steps or less, I've done the whole theorem, right? Here we go. X times Y is zero, then I'm done. Um, what if it's not? Well, there exists A and R such that um, and there exists B and R such that and of course I need to get both of them to go. So I have this. incomplete in my logic here. Anybody guess? What's that name? I'm sorry. I shouldn't have turned the air conditioner. What was that? Oh, uh, no, I'm going to assume it's commutative, right? So there's, there's, there's no worries that way. Well, here, here's the tediousness of it. Implicitly in my picture, I'm assuming that A and X are different, right? And that, you've got to check, right? What if X is nil potent and yawn, yawn, yawn? It, but you go through the details, but that would be something that I, I mean, I could actually assign as a, as a, as a weak project to uh, an undergraduate algebra class because there's nothing really complex in it. Uh, you just have to have the patience to just go through the cases and uh, sort of whittle it out. But I think that this is... Uh, terribly interesting, and actually, it's actually given rise to a whole industry of papers like, um, you know, what happens, how do you relate the, relate the zero divisor graph of R to the zero divisor graph of Rx. Actually, I wrote a paper with a couple of guys doing stuff on power series and polynomials, which I thought was kind of a cute paper, right? Oh, it's cute, you know? But it, it wasn't like some big centerpiece that I thought of my own research. And now it's turned out that that paper is like my second or third most cited paper. So there's obviously a lot of people that are out there interested in this kind of stuff. But I think that's, that's kind of it. I, I mean, I can also say this is a zero positive graph. I should also give another plug to, there is a lot of energy, I think, in my field of algebra right now going into attaching graphs to algebraic objects and trying to tell some things about it. So, for example, one of my PhD students, after he got out, came up with this concept called the irreducible divisor graph, which completely determines if the integral domain has unique factorization. If you look at that, uh, there are graphical notions of things like um, adjacency and ideals. Uh, there's graphical notions of factorization. Jason Boynton and I did something on uh, this graph theoretic property can tell you whether everything can be factored or not. So there's lots of interesting things that you can do uh, attaching these kind of graphs. One thing that I would like to see, uh, 
um, which I don't really think has been done yet in, uh, in, in the research field, is it would be really neat if there was a result where you've got some kind of structural question about a ring or something like this, or an algebraic object. You attach the graph to it. And you look at the graph and say, oh, this graph has some properties, and you can actually learn something about the algebraic structure. That really hasn't been done so much. And that's probably not a big surprise, because you lose a lot of information when you go to just a graph from that. But I think that you would be really, really sexy if you could come up with something like that, where you actually use the graph to come up with some kind of algebraic answer to something about a, a, an algebraic structure. Thank you all for coming and listening to me. being connected. So if you have a graph like Z hundred. Uh-huh. Ten times ten is a hundred, so wouldn't it be disconnected? No? Well if you like we can sit down and all you have to do is list all the factors of a hundred, which there's a few of them. Right? Or everything that's, that has, because you've got at least 50 from the factors of 2, right? And, well, 49 if you throw out the 0, and then you have the multiples of 5 and so forth. But when you do that, you will find that that graph is connected. In fact, I think that if you look at a Z mod N, right? So just, uh, you know, none of the Z2 cross Z2. If you look at just the Z mod N, I think that the 0 divisor graph for those always has diameter less than or equal to 2. So, other questions? Yes? Sir. Could you not maybe find a range with infinite number of zero divisors? Oh, yeah, sure, sure. There's zero infinite. No, infinite number of zero divisors. Oh, right. Then stop. That's one way that you can do it. <laughs> Or you can take any ring that has non-zero zero divisors and look at its polynomial ring, yeah. right? Uh, or you can do things with power series, things like that. You can build big direct products. There's all kinds of there's all kinds of things that you can do. Yes. Okay, so starting from a ring, we can go to the zero direct, zero divisor graph. Is there a way, like you know? You can go the other way, giving some seven There's been some work like done on this, right? So the question is, if I just walk up to you on the street and hand you a graph, mm -hmm. does this is this actually the zero divisor graph yeah. of some? Now it turns out that they have to have some property. This one, of course, that has to be connected to diameter less than. Okay. But there are many graphs that are connected that have diameter less than three that are not the zero yeah. divisor graph yeah. of anything. So and I could, if you're curious about it, come see me because I could give you a reference, I think. I'd have to look it up. But there are some interesting papers that have been done on, okay, okay this one will never work and so forth. Others? Yes. Is there any formula to compute the number of zero divisors for certain kinds of finite things? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, depending on what they are. I mean, what you can do is... There is a theorem. If it's a finite ring, it's fairly easy because here's what you do. If R is finite, and again, I mean to keep it with identity, then every X in R is either a unit or a zero factor. So if you have a finite ring, I mean, this is different than the ordinary integers, where you have something like 2 in the ordinary integer, which is neither a unit, because 1 half is not an integer, nor is it a zero divisor, right? However, if you have a finite ring, you've got two kinds of elements, units and zero divisors. And with many finite rings, there are algorithms, especially products of Z mod N, where you can count the units fairly easy. So just count the units and throw them out, and there you go. Others? Yes, so intuitively, basically, what you've got, because it seems like as you build these things up, you've got some really dense. Things. Yes. And if everything goes through, right? That's yeah, that's what's going to happen is if I, if I keep adding, uh, like, the Z mod N's making bigger, with, like, bigger and bigger uh, powers 
lots of prime factors, that's what will happen. It'll just kind of get denser. And intuitively, that's why we have like the short path. Yeah, that's that's exactly right. I mean, you can sort of see it from the proof because, in a certain sense, the proof, even though my proof is faulty, it maps the way to go. Right? If X and Y are connected, go that direction. Uh, just find somewhere that X goes, and then you can find the other connector. Right? So what's uh, special with uh, the ones with degree 1? Is there anything? So, uh, I'm sorry, the ones with... The, the vertices with degree 1 in the graph. Oh! What, is there anything nice, easy, simple? Well, I mean, I, you, like, you could say that, okay, it's got a, a unique zero value complement or something like that. Yeah. I mean, if you look at the zero value, what this means is this guy has three zero, this guy has three non-trivial zero values, right? So you can read graphical information like that. That's what you mean. Others? They can call me right? What's that? Wimpy, yeah. <laughs> that that is the technical name. <laughs> So you guys got a job now, make that pizza disappear. <laughs> <laughs>